so often as we have experienced in the last year or maybe more so, even in my case, um, in the last several years, the challenges and difficulties of the things that have gone, come about in our own personal lives as well as in a national and international, our international lives in our world today. And it's been seemingly unprecedented as far as the things that have happened. And folks tend to cope with those situations in various and different ways. And people focus on um, different um, ways to cope in the midst of those trials, in the midst of those difficulties. And I've read articles where a lot of folks have, um, there's been a, a lot of overdoses. That people have been stressed and people will, will turn to substances in order to um, alleviate or relieve the things that they're, trying, that they're going through. Um, other and folks have uh, used other means and other ways to cope or try to cope with the situations that they're facing and the circumstances that they're currently under. What, we, what today we're going to look at today is, is how Jesus, being in the last night of his life on earth, because this is the last night, this was after Jesus was in the garden of Gethsemane with his, uh, with his disciples. There's three of them that specifically that were with them uh, in the midst of the garden. That was Peter, James, and John. And so we see here how Jesus, what was Jesus facing? Jesus was facing some tremendous, incredibly difficult circumstances that lay ahead of him. And how did Jesus cope with that? We're going to look at that this morning. Um, how did he cope with, uh, in the midst of, of uh, betrayal? How did he cope in the midst of violence? How did he cope in the midst of seemingly difficult circumstances beyond what uh, seeming beyond what um, any normal human being could possibly even be. So that's what we're going to be looking at this morning, and how Jesus faced it, and how we can face it this morning as well. Um, today is uh, Palm Sunday, and normally we have a Palm Sunday message, but um, this is uh, during the week the last week of Jesus' life, and the Lord directed me to um, uh, preach on, share on um, this particular scripture passage um, as a part of the last week of Jesus' life. Um, uh, if we look at it, it's going to be Luke chapter 2, verses 39, uh, 22, verses 20, 39 through uh, 53, and please follow that as I read along. Luke 22, 39 through uh, 53. And he came out and proceeded as was his custom to the Mount of Olives, and his disciples also followed him. He arrived at the place, he said to them, Pray that you may not enter into temptation. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw, and he knelt down and began to pray saying, rather, Father, it is, if it is your, if your will, remove this, remove this cup from me, yet not my will, but yours be done. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthening him. And then being in agony, he was praying very fervently, and his, and his sweat became like drops of blood, falling down from the ground. When he rose from prayer, he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow, and said to them, why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not enter into temptation. While he was still speaking, behold, a crowd came, and the one called Judas, one of the twelve, was, was preceding them, and he approached Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? When those who were around him saw what was, hap what was going to happen, they said, Lord, Shall we strike with the swords? And one of them struck the slave of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Stop, no more of this. And he touched his ear and healed him. Then Jesus said to the chief priests and to the officers of the temple and elders who had 
come against him? Have you come out with swords and clubs as, as would against a, a robber? While I was with you daily in the temple, you did not lay hands on me. But this hour had, and the power of darkness are yours. And may God add the blessing to the reading of this word. So our, our, we're going to look at three specific points. We're going to be looking at, uh, our first point is, at verses 1 through, I mean 39 through 45 is pray. Um, verses 47, 48 is betrayal. And verses um, 49 through 53 is um, faithful to the end. So let's look at our first point. It says pray. We've heard this before. It's an old adage. We, we hear it all the time, though. Pray. What, 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 what's Jesus facing here? It says, And he came out and proceeded, as was his custom, to the Mount of Olives. And that was just at, right outside of Jerusalem. And, and the disciples also followed him. So here was Jesus doing what he was accustomed to doing. Um, and what was that custom? Was to go out to the garden. And what would he often do in that garden? He would often go in there as a, as a, as a place to what? To pray. To pray, it was a, a place where it was solitude, a, pray, a place where it was, he could find rest, where he could find um, solace with his father. He could be one with his father. He could be in a place where, okay, this is my sanctuary. This is the place where I need to be. So we see here, um, uh, his disciples, as good followers, followed him there. Um, and as they were in the midst of the garden, so they were there with Jesus. They didn't fully... Now, his disciples were there, and as we're, go, we're coming ahead, when he arrived at the place, he said to them, pray that you may not enter into temptation. The disciples didn't fully understand what was happening in their midst, and what was going to happen. They didn't fully comprehend it. They, Jesus spoke about it at the Passover. Jesus spoke about things, uh, even prior to the Passover, about things that would come, and the challenges that would come, but the disciples couldn't fully grasp what was going on and what was happening. Uh, incredibly difficult, incredibly challenging, incredibly hard to bear circumstances were happening and were about to happen and were going to get much, much, much worse. And what does Jesus tell his disciples? Jesus knew what was happening. Jesus knew exactly what was going on because it had been predicted and it had been, had been shared about. Jesus knew all the circumstances. Did that daunt Jesus? Did that those circumstances daunt him? Did he know, even knowing what was going on, daunt him? Absolutely not. But what else did Jesus do? Not only was he praying, but he was encouraging what? His disciples to do what? Pray that you do, may not enter into temptation. He knew temptations were going to come. He knew trials were going to come. He knew things were going to happen and are happening. He knows the enemy. He, he dealt with the enemy from the beginning, since the garden, even before the garden, when Lucifer was up in heaven and he shook his fist at God and says, no, I'm not going to follow you. He knew all that. He was there with all that. He knows Satan's schemes. He knows he's a... He's a, he's a, he's a He's a lot, he comes to kill, steal, and what? Destroy. As the scripture says. He knows all that. He knows his schemes. He knows his plan. And he knows what he wants to do. And he knows that he want, comes to thwart God's plan and God's purposes in his life and in the world. And Jesus is fully aware of that. And Jesus is not only fully aware of it, so he prays, so he can pray, and prepare to get ready, but so that he can tell his disciples, 
you may not know, you may not understand what's happening, you may not know what's going on, but you need to pray lest you fall into temptation. Are Christians um, immune from temptation? Absolutely not. Does God protect us? Absolutely, He does. But, we're not immune from temptation. Temptation is not sin. It's only when we give in to temptation, we give in to the temptation, the voice of the enemy, that we fall into temptation. It's when we listen to his voice, and we listen to those desires within our hearts that cause us, Satan can't work with anything that's not already there. And if it's something there in our hearts, like it was with Judas, well, Judas had a love for money. He loved to steal. He was putting, he was a, he was the accountant. Jesus knew all that, and he was dipping his money into the thing. He knew uh, into the, in the money bag all the time. And so Satan saw the right opportunity, and he whispered in his ear, you know what, you can, you can betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, which is equal to uh, $25 in our money. It's equal to $25. So whatever was in his heart, it didn't matter the amount. All he was concerned about was, you know what? This is great. I get an extra $25. All I have to do is just betray my master. But that's what Satan had to work with. That's what Satan had to deal with. And if the things in our hearts that, uh, that the enemy th it can work with, he will. And so there, and he will use those things. What causes, uh, those, what causes temptations among you? And then look at James. Isn't it the, the lust that war within you? Look at read the book of James. It talks about that. So those things come from, those temptations come from the things that, the very things that are in our hearts that we need to deal with and that we need to recognize and we need to face and say, okay, God, I recognize these things. I recognize these things that are going on and uh, help me to deal with these things. But also, it's the one way to also is, is that we, if we're susceptible to those things and, and, and we know we're prone to those things and we know that danger is coming, we know that difficulties are coming, what do we need to do? What does Jesus call us to do? What does Jesus tell us to do? He needs to pray. Pray, 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 pray. What happens when you're in the midst of, I, I, I was in the midst of dire circumstances and a situation this week where it was really, really, really incredibly hard. It was incredibly difficult beyond what I could humanly deal with and face. It was really, really, really super hard. And God told me that I need to pray. I need to pray. And I need to pray. And I need to pray. And I need to pray. Even in the midst of it. Even in the midst of it. And even in the midst of difficulty. And you know what happened? When I prayed. I kept praying. I didn't give in. I didn't give up. You know what happened? God's peace came over the situation. And God began to work the details out. And God began to settle things down. That's what happens. Pray that you don't enter into temptation. That's what Jesus was telling his disciples. That's what he was doing. Now let's go on to our next verse. And he withdrew from them about a stone's throw away. And he knelt and prayed. He had the six foot, he had the six foot uh, social distancing right there. But uh, he withdrew and he knelt down and, he, and what did he do? Here's Jesus. He was God and he was man, wasn't he? God and man are the same person. He didn't need to pray. He was God. But why would he need to pray? He was still a human, wasn't he? He was fully God and he was fully man. But he was still a human. That one, he was still a, a human. He still had, he was still susceptible to temptation. You saw that in, while he was in the desert, when Satan tempted him, right? He overcame those temptations. He countered those temptations with Scripture. But, Jesus knew that he was facing some incredibly, in the midst of incredibly challenging spiritual battle that was going on. And notice the battle was that Jesus was 
lifting up that Jesus was uh, facing was this, the salvation of mankind. The salvation of us. The salvation of all those who would follow. But what did, what, what did Satan want him to do? Satan wanted him to give in. Didn't he? Satan wanted Jesus to give in. And, and, and then what would have happened to us? What would happen to the perfect sacrifice, the perfect lamb? But Jesus knew what was at stake. He understood what was at stake. And he, and he took the time and he prayed. And that's what we... He took the time and he prayed. And he prayed so hard. And then listen to this. And he says, Father, if you are willing, remove this cup from me. Yet not my will, but yours be done. Verse 42. The agony that Jesus was going through and his spirit. There's a medical condition. I'm not sure where that, that can happen. Where the, 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 the grief was so much that it was mixed with, that his sweat was mixed with blood. His grief that, that he bore. The grief that he bore knowing that what he was going to be carrying upon himself. Knowing that what he knowing that he was he was to bear the the agony, knowing that he was to bear the sin of all mankind. No, that you you know how it feels when we sin and it hurts really bad and we're really guilty about it? Imagine trying to carry all that of all humanity, of all humankind upon you. And when you did nothing wrong. Imagine trying to care, bear the weight of all of that upon you. Imagine the pressure and the grief and the pain and the agony that he bore. That he would bear it. And his soul. That's what was at stake. And he, and he, and he, would, and he said, it would, and said in his human part, in his human nature, he said, God, somehow, if, if you could somehow let this cup with pass, let it pass. And nevertheless, not my will be done, but yours. Jesus was at that place where even though the agony and the, uh, the grief was so bare, uh, was so much, was so much, was so much pressure, so much, uh, so much going on that it was incredibly difficult. He was willing to say, God, if you can pass it, great. But if not, not my will, but yours be done. Because he knew it was at stake. And that's part of the other reason, is that uh, part of the other situation, when we know we're in situations and circumstances that are incredibly difficult, we need to pray. That's the first thing. But also, we need to be able to come be at a place where we're willing to submit our will to God's will. Because sometimes we get a little resistant, don't we? We get a little resistant in our human nature. We're born sinners and we have a sin nature, folks. Jesus tried to rescue us from the sin nature, but the sin nature is still there and we're sanctified and we're getting better and better. But the sin nature is still there until we go home to be with Jesus. But we resist. And we resist and say no. And we resist and we say no. But Jesus was willing to come to the place where he says, it's not my will, God, but yours, whatever you want. And that's the place where we have to go to, too. Because we have to wrestle with our, we have to wrestle with God and say, God, this is hard. This is incredibly hard. But if there's no other way, God, if there's no other way to do it, then it's not my will, but whatever you want, God. That's what I want. Not my will, but yours. Even though this is hard, God, even though I would rather not do this, God, if this is what's gonna, if this is gonna be your will, then let your will be done. Let it be done in my heart. Let it be done in my soul. Let it be done with me, within me. Because when that happens, then that's where his peace comes. Guys. That's where his peace comes. When you settle your heart, say, okay, God. You stop the fighting, you stop the, no, 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 holding on to your own will, holding on to your, you know, the, the grips of your whatever you want, and trying to get out of whatever you want, rather than just saying, okay, God, 
It's yours. God is yours. I surrender to you. And that's the way salvation is too, isn't it, Pat? So that we resist our will and say, God, I surrender. How about that song? I surrender all. I surrender all. All to you, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. And I can't sing very well, but I try. My friend, he used to call me Johnny in the death tones. I can't sing very well, but I try. But, but, you know, it's, it's when that surrender comes, not my will, but the rest of And when the peace comes, and the strength comes, to be able to do whatever he wants us to do, to be able to face whatever he wants us to face. Because you know, like I said, Jesus knows what's coming. Jesus knows what we're going through. Jesus knows what's coming. And he wants us to be prepared. He wants us to be successful. He wants us to overcome. Do we believe that? Do we believe that? Otherwise, he would not have given us these instructions. He wants us to be successful. He wants us to overcome. What does the scripture say? We are overwhelmingly more than conquerors through him who loved us. He wants us to be conquerors. He wants us to be mighty. Like David. David overcame, didn't he? Yeah. Like we can. We, over, we can overcome. We face those trials. We face those difficulties. So we don't have to turn to other things to cope with our lives. We don't have to turn to other things. We can turn to Jesus. We can turn to Him and find, uh, find our peace when we pray. We can turn to Him and find our peace um, and our answers when we, find, when we release our will to Him. Say, yes, Jesus. Just like He did. Because what would happen to Jesus? What happened to Jesus when He turned His will over? He overcame, didn't He? He was victorious, it wasn't it? Thank God he was, right? Thank God that he was. Thank God that he was. But where would we be if he wasn't? Well, let's go on here. Now an angel from heaven appeared to him, strengthened him. And that always happens. We don't always see it. But an angel came and said, you know, this is for humanly, this was Jesus. This was really incredibly difficult. It really, it really was. But God knew that. So what did God do? He sent one of his angels to strengthen him. To build him up. Because he knew that in the human, the human, in the human spirit, it was really hard for Jesus. But God knew what he needed, right? God knew what he needed. Just like with us. In our hour of need, in our hour of temptation, our hour of trial. God's going to give us what we need. He's going to send those unseen angels in the midst. You read Hebrews chapter 1. It talks about the angels who are ministering spirits and minister to God's people. He sent, he sent his angels to minister to God's people. He sent it to us. And that's why I want to just encourage us. Is that God sends in those times, in those midst, in those trials, God sends what we need in order for us to gain what we need in order to overcome. Right? Right, he does. He does. He does. He does. Well, let's go on. And being in agony, he was also praying fervently, and his sweat became like drops of blood. And he rose from prayer because of the agony. And he rose from prayer, and he came to the disciples and found them sleeping from sorrow. And he said to them, Why are you sleeping? Get up and pray that you may not enter into temptation. They were so sad about what Jesus was experiencing, what Jesus was going through. That they were so sad. This was they were this was all night. They were up all night. Of course, they were tired. But they were tired also from, from, you know, from sorrow for their for their friend, their master, was going through what he was going through. And they fell asleep in the midst of it, and it happened. It happens, but it happens. And sometimes we need to, and this is the thing that we need to listen to what happens. Because 
when we don't pray, sometimes we can succumb to the temptation, succumb to the difficulties. We can succumb to the circumstances and and and, and, and give in to the circumstances and the situation. Like Peter. What did Peter end up doing? Peter said, no, I'll never do it. I'm the man. I'm the man. Peter was the alpha. That was he was the alpha male. Right? I'm, I'll never do it. It's not gonna, not me. Mm -mm. I'll never deny you, Lord. I'm that big burly, strong fisherman. I'll never do it. But who was the one who fell who, who was one of the ones that were there that fell sick? Right? So we need to pray. If Jesus gave them, we have warned them the first time, and Jesus warned them it is the second time. Right? You may not enter into temptation. Because none of us be not remember this. None of us, no matter the strongest Christian, no matter the strongest person, no matter the strongest, most mature individual on this earth is above temptation. We're not. The greatest preachers, the greatest ministers, are all susceptible to temptation. And that's why they needed to pray. That's why we need to pray. We need to submit our will to Him. Because what happens in verses 47 and 48? While He was still speaking, behold, a crowd came. And one called Judas, one of the twelve, was preceding them, and he approached Jesus to kiss him. And Jesus said to him, Judas, are you betraying the Son of Man with a kiss? Jesus was aware of what happened. Jesus knew what the sign was for to what Judas was going to do. That that was going to be the sign for Judas to betray him. Because that was what Judas had previously arranged with the religious leaders who were to arrest Jesus, that that was going to be the sign that um, this was the one who you are to arrest. This is the one, he's the one who you're looking for. This is Jesus. So when I go up and kiss him and greet him, you'll know who it is that you need to arrest. And Jesus knew that and was aware of it. And that's why he was saying to Judas, be aware. I mean, why Jesus, you're going to betray the Son of Man with a kiss? And Judas didn't even, and this is the thing here, folks. Judas didn't even get it. Judas didn't even get it even at that point. He didn't even realize it at that point. He didn't realize it at that because he didn't understand because he didn't have a spiritual mind there. He didn't have a spiritual heart. He wasn't in tune with what God was saying. And so he, therefore he didn't get it. There was no remorse. There was no any sense of my goodness, what am I doing? There wasn't anything there. Nothing. But Jesus knew all that. Jesus was fully aware. And folks, let me say this as well. Yeah. We, as God's people, that's why Jesus is saying, Jesus knows what's happening. Jesus knows what's going on. And Jesus knows what's coming. We've just experienced in our world a lot of, in our experience, in a lot of tumultuous, difficult times. Was Jesus caught up far with that? Did Jesus know about that all along? Did he catch him up? Oh, like, where would that come from? Like, not, a lot of people didn't see the corona coming. A lot of people did. Some people did, but a lot of people didn't. But did he catch Jesus off guard? No, absolutely not. He knew what was coming. He knows what's happening now. He knows what will happen. 
And what is he telling us to do? He's preparing us for what? For what's going to happen. And Christians are going, Christians have faced difficulties for their faith in the past. It's not going to be any different with us. We're going to face difficulties in our life. Life comes with that. But God is saying that we're going to be facing difficulties. We're going to be facing challenges. And we need to be aware that they're coming. We need to be aware that they're going to be coming. And that things are going to happen that are going to be very extremely difficult to handle and to face. And what are we going to do in order to face them? Are we going to be aware? Are we going to be alert? Are we going to be understanding of what's going on? And are we going to be prepared to... Face those things. Are we going to pray? Are we going to stand in the end? Are we going to stand in the end? Are we going to stand in the end? I don't care how old we we are. I don't care how long we've been walking with the Lord. I've been walking with the Lord uh, over 40 years. And and I have a I have a level of maturity that God has graced me with in my faith and my walk with Him. But that that's, does not mean that I'm not susceptible to temptation of the trials and difficulties that will come. And that means for not, neither, not any of us, no matter what level of maturity we have in our faith, we need to be aware and we need to know that those things are coming and we need to stand. We need to stand firm and we need to stand strong. And we need to pray. We need to choose His will above our own. Let's go on here. And then we see here, even in the midst, and what Jesus said to him in verses 48, 38, we see a little skirmish here. But we see, and then, and then um, we see where um, the disciples were in their own zeal, zeal in order to protect Jesus. They got the sword, and they went, shh, and they cut one of the servants, servants' ears. But what Jesus says, stop, that's enough. We're not, that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing. That's not what we're about. And Jesus took, Jesus took the ear and he healed it. And the ear was holy. And the man was blind. Jesus' way isn't always through violence. Jesus' way isn't always through aggression. Jesus' way is through following the Father's love and allowing him to lead and to guide and to follow. And not necessarily through oppression. But go on, let's go on here because this is really important. Let's get let's skip down to the last verse. Um, and while I was with you daily in the temple, did you not lay hands on me? He's talking to the religious leaders and those who came to arrest him. But this hour and power of darkness are you. In other words, he was talking to the religious leaders. And they were in cahoots with who? They were in cahoots with the enemy. They didn't know that. They were in cahoots with the devil. Because they, the devil was using them as pawns in order to arrest you. But again, that was what was already in their hearts. And Jesus knew that the hour of power was in their hands at that point. In other words, they were going to do what they were going to do. And God and Jesus knew that this was a part of God's plan to allow Jesus to be arrested so that he could be crucified, so that he could bear our sin, and so that he could rise again and become victorious and give that victory and share that victory with us. So that Satan may have his hour. He may have his plan. But what did Jesus do in the end here? He says, he remained, even in the midst, he allowed him, them to arrest him. And he knew that was a part of God's plan. Right? Jesus remained faithful to him. In the midst of it all, in the midst of his betrayal, in the midst of them arresting him, he remained faithful, folks. Faithful. In the times of trials, in the times of temptation, in the times of difficulty, he remained faithful, didn't he? He stood to the end. I want to hear those words in my own life. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter into thy rest. 
enter into thy rest. Well done, good and faithful servant. I want to hear those words. I want to stand in the end. But we need to pray. We need to turn our will, to yield our will to the Father. We have to remain faithful. Even in the midst of when things get really hairy, when things get really difficult, when things get unbearable. Because believe me, folks, they will come. They, we have experienced some of it, but they will come. Folks all in other parts of the world have experienced great and tremendous difficulty. We get the voice of the Martyr magazine, which, which chronicles the, the, uh, the testimonies of many of, uh, Christian believers throughout the world who are experiencing difficulties and, and persecutions even right now. That, then, that doesn't mean that because we haven't faced it here in the United States, doesn't mean that we won't. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. Right? And, and what we need to do is that we need to be prepared, folks. We need to pray. We need to yield our will to Him. We need to remain faithful, folks. Remain faithful. Amen? Amen. Let's go ahead. Well, Father, thank you, Almighty God, for your uh, precious, precious, precious Word, God, uh, that brings life, that brings hope. Uh, Father, we ask, oh God, even right now, that you would just help us, oh God, to... Uh, uh, God, we've been through a lot. We've been going through a lot. We're facing difficulties. We're facing trials, oh God. And trials are going to come, God. And God, we just need you, oh God, so desperately. God, help us to pray in the midst. Help us to recognize when, things, when trials are difficult. Well, help us to recognize the things when we're in the midst of things, oh God. Help us to prepare. Help us to be ready, oh God. Help us to pray, oh God. Help us to yield our will to you, oh God. Help us to stand faithful and remain faithful to the end, God. We need you des desperately, oh God. We need you desperately. We need you desperately, oh God. Please help us. Please, oh God. For those of us who do not you, just pray a simple prayer. Jesus. I don't know you, but I want to know you. I know that I've sinned against you, that I've hurt you. Please forgive me of my sin. Please forgive me of all the things I've done. I know that you died for me on the cross. I know that you shed your blood for me. Please wash me with your blood. Come into my heart to be my Lord and my Savior, even this day. I yield my will to you this day. I give, give you my all. I submit to you. And I thank you, Jesus, for what you have done and you are doing in my life. In Jesus' name, I thank you. And Father, we uh, pray for those who have just given their lives to you. We just pray, Father, that you would keep them and protect them and grow them and mature them in you, O God. We pray. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, that we also forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, both now and forever. Amen. Father, I pray you dismiss your people now with your peace and with your joy. Uh, Father, uh, be thou glorified in our lives, we pray. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen.